Hello again, I'm Catherine Bruce, wrapping up our segment about industrial spaces for the Bright Ideas series. Sitting down with us today is John Temple, a division segment manager for lighting at 3E. John, we've already discussed important factors to consider when selecting industrial products for industrial spaces. Can you tell us a little bit about the failures you're seeing in the market today when customers choose the, the cheapest product on the market? Uh, yeah, the most common uh, failure reason that we're seeing, especially in industrial, is due to uh, high ambient temperature. Uh, we see a lot of products that are sold that uh, are price point items that are only rated at 25 degrees C, and that's just not going to work unless it happens to be an air conditioned environment, which I don't know about everywhere, but in Iowa, those are rare. And how often are you seeing those failures and to what extent? Well, thankfully, we personally haven't experienced many. We tend to uh, stress very strongly to uh, select products that have higher ambient temperature ratings for those applications. But we have on occasion had someone that uh, managed to sell some that were lower temp ratings. And uh, when that happens, it's, it's a problem because in most cases, the manufacturer of either the driver or the fixture are saying that the fixture was misapplied. Uh, they'll point to their temperature rating and say, sorry, it's, it's not our problem. So some differences, are there differences that you see in the, in the brands of the products for industrial lighting fixtures? Almost oh, definitely. Uh, the typically we'll see uh, on the, better quality products, the name brand products uh, tend to be, uh, I mean, they most will have a lower end specification, but they have products that will have that higher end spec that um, will have a 50, 55 degree C rating, have higher uh, surge suppression uh, built into it. Uh, those are the key components that are likely to be a problem in an industrial environment. So what are you looking for in, or what makes a quality industrial product for you? Yeah, the, the driver selection, the heat sinking that's involved with it. Uh, how are they dealing with the, the uh, heat that's internally generated? Um, depending on the environment too, you might want to go with something that's a sealed product uh, versus an open product. Uh, we've had you know, products that were misapplied in very dusty environments and, and they fail quickly just because they fill up with dust. So you want to be careful about that as well. Uh, but our biggest, our biggest failure issue has been heat. Uh, solid state components do not like heat. Uh, <laughs> it will kill them very quickly. Right. Which uh, we always uh, try to get people to look at uh, in situ or, or testing that is with the fixture in the environment that it's going to be in, not just the uh, manufacturer's uh, LM79 or LM80 test data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's say a customer has selected a, a lower quality product for their industrial space and they're experiencing a failure. What are some of the obstacles that you've had to face in that situation to get it resolved? Well, again, we've had few because we don't typically let the guys sell those sorts of products. But in the instances where it has happened, uh, the fixture manufacturer pointed to the driver manufacturer and the driver manufacturer pointed to the fixture manufacturer. A little bit of this. And, yeah, exactly. And uh, in one instance that I know of, uh, we ended up having to replace all the fixtures at our own expense because the manufacturer would not honor the warranty. Uh, there have been instances where uh, businesses have gone out. I mean, they just disappear um, because it's like two years later and the product warranty was five years or maybe some cases 10 mm -hmm. and the, the fixture manufacturer is gone out of business or opened under a new name. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of pointing to my next question there was, is there a big difference or what are some of the differences between dealing with an import company versus more of a major conglomerate manufacturer? Well, if we're dealing with someone like Acuity, for instance, uh, we have a long history with Acuity. I would dare say it goes back, well, I've been here 30 years and it's, it predates me by probably 20 years at least. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have you know, a history with you guys. We know that you'll stand behind your product. Uh, we're not worried about one project that may go south. Every fixture manufacturer has problems. It's gonna happen. But uh, 
when we're dealing with someone that we don't know very well and they, they don't have a track record uh, or a long history, uh, there is not that comfort level. One, one big problem could be the end of the company, especially we tell our guys, if you see a company name that has LLC behind the uh, title, that's something you need to really be wary of because that is a limited liability corporation and they could fold up shop tomorrow. The purposes of an LLC is to protect the owners from problems like that. And does your company have a stocking policy for which brands you choose to stock? Oh, yes. Yeah, we, we have a process that they have to go through to uh, get new products approved and um, going to have to answer some questions uh, anytime they submit a product. If it were for a company that we have uh, a relationship with, like Acuity, uh, the only uh, thing that we're looking at would be if it duplicates something we already have, then we would be worried about what we're going to do with the product we already have. But if it's a product line or a, or a line, a new line from a manufacturer that is, say, a second or third tier manufacturer, uh, they're going to have to really jump through some hoops to get that approved. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have to be something that we can't get from one of our approved vendors. So you kind of hinted at you know, the relationship, uh, the customer service, and uh, the viability of the brands. Um, but are, are there any other reasons why this policy, this stocking policy was implemented? Well, our, part of our reputation as a company is dependent on the brands that we represent, that, that we you know, continue to recommend. And if we... Uh, those those relationships are valuable to us. I mean, we we select uh, large name brands on purpose to we want to be associated with those companies. We we want to be careful about how our name and our brand is associated with uh, companies that may not have the uh, presence in the market, the the financial backing, the just the security of dealing with someone who is a a um, larger, more established brand. Mm -hmm. So you, you talked a little bit about reputation there. Um, now, a lot of people think, you know, if there's a fixture failure, you think about the brand that you're buying and it hurts that brand's reputation, but is there a feeling of it also a fixture failure hurting the reputation of your company in that situation? Oh yeah, it most definitely, uh, I mean, it can negatively impact us, but as I mentioned before, there isn't a, a manufacturer out there that doesn't suffer from some product failures at you know from time to time. It, it happens. Uh, these are electronic components. There, there are going to be issues. It's all in how you deal with those issues. And if you can uh, resolve it quickly and to in an equitable manner with the customer, uh, you you gain standing from those sorts of dealings. But it's when it, it's like pulling teeth trying to get the thing resolved or to get a equitable outcome, uh, that's when you lose uh, valuable points on your reputation. Right. All right. Well, thank you, John, for joining us today. I appreciate the customer's perspective that you brought. In our next episode of Bright Ideas, we're going to switch gears. We'll chat with some lighting industry educational experts to talk about the best ways to educate your customers and influencers.